One of the things that I like about Apple products is their security. But one of the issues with that security is when something happens to a component that has to do with security, such as Face ID or the proximity sensor, the phone can simply shut off and not come back on. Or if you do get it to come back on, it'll just boot loop on the Apple logo and it won't get past that. The phone that I have here today is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. When I got this phone, it was boot looping. Typically, that's one of four issues. Potentially a charge port is causing a boot loop, power button is causing the boot loop. Beyond that, it's the proximity sensor with the face ID. And beyond that, it's an issue with the logic board where this is short. While the phone boots up, it's running a check. It's checking to see if everything's working. And when it runs that check on the proximity sensor assembly and it doesn't, and it basically knocks on the door and it doesn't open, it shuts down and restarts the phone hoping that with enough knocks it'll get through. Never does when it's a short. When there's a short on the motherboard, it's typically not on one of the main power rails, otherwise we wouldn't get any life at all. And that's a little trickier to diagnose. So generally speaking, I hope that it's one of the first three, the charge port, power button, or the proximity sensor. Obviously the proximity sensor is a little bit more complicated because if you want to retain face ID, which is a wonderful function to have, it requires a little bit of extra work. Quick way to diagnose that, it is simply unplug one of each of those and test it. See, does it turn on, does it work? And typically when we do that, we find that as we disconnect one of them, it's sure, sure enough, it turns on. In this case, I opened it up, uh, disconnect the charge port, still boot looped. Disconnect the proximity sensor, boom, boot it up. Now, of course, when it boots up, it'll drop the brightness of the screen all the way down, so it's kind of hard to see. Now, a quick and easy solution is simply to replace the proximity sensor assembly. In doing so, you regain the functions that are on that proximity sensor flex cable, like the ambient light sensor, your ear speaker, the microphone. The one thing that you do lose if you replace the proximity sensor assembly is the face ID. What we're gonna need for that is a new proximity sensor assembly. This is a premium, which requires soldering if we wanna say face ID. Sometimes it's as simple as opening up the device going under a microscope and finding why the proximity sensor has failed. A lot of the time it's just simple corrosion, maybe a drop or two of liquid or maybe sweat got inside the ear speaker and got to the proximity sensor and, and shorted something out. I'm gonna show you how, how we fix that today. And let's also see if we can save Face ID. I've got everything connected. We got the screen, the charge port, battery, proximity sensor connected, and we go to power it on. Give it a, there we go. You get an Apple logo and then right there, boom. Turns off, Apple logo, right? And turns off again. So it'll continue to do this. So we'll open it up, disconnect the battery, disconnect the proximity sensor. Let's reconnect the battery. And now let's try to turn it on. And there we go, Apple logo. It's booting up, it hasn't shut off yet, you see that? Uh, it might look like it's going to turn off here in a second, but you can actually see there is an image there. It's on and working, which is really hard to see. We need the functions that the ambient light sensor has at the top, otherwise it's just going to dim the screen all the way down. Let's go ahead and remove the proximity sensor and take a look at it under our microscope. We got four screws holding down the proximity sensor. Two are a tri-wing and the other two are regular Phillips. You gently go under the flex cable. You'll be able to work your way over and carefully lift up on the units. One thing that I like to do, not necessary, but I do recommend it, is put a single drop of isopropyl alcohol and it'll help you loosen up the grip that the adhesive has on holding these uh, these components in. You can also put the screen on a heat plate for a minute and warm up those sensors so that there isn't a chance that you damage them in the process. All right, there we go. Now carefully going over everything, typically you'd see a little bit of erosion don't see anything. Maybe right there, just a little bit of something. 
not sure. Quickly, it's fairly obvious why a component has failed, just not seeing it in this one. All right, let's do some testing. I went ahead and connected up the new proximity sensor just to make sure it was nothing wrong with the connector. And sure enough, you can see when it comes on, it's got full brightness. It does obviously say that uh, we're unable to activate base ID, but you can see that it is uh, it's definitely working. The brightness is definitely back. Here I've got our replacement proximity sensor. And when I go over here with my multimeter here, I'm on ground. This side's ground and it's kind of hard to see, but I can make out that the only one on this side that should be ground is this pin right here. The rest should not have um, any direct contact with the ground, just this one right here. And on this side, I can kind of see all the lines coming off. Nothing looks like it's connected to ground. I don't even think this side, yeah, this side isn't even ground. It's just this side and this pin. And there's no schematics for this yet, at least on ZXW. And so um, this will be a little interesting to try to diagnose, but let's go to our faulty proximity sensor now, and we'll go ground here. This should be ground right here, right? And let's go around and see if anything else touches ground. So this will be ground. Oh, and we got another right here, whatever this is. The number four, whatever number four goes to, whatever this fourth pin is, is shorted. So uh, yeah, but wherever that line goes, we've got a we've got a contact with ground. So something shorted out. This component is what houses our face ID function. It's kind of like the key, even though it really doesn't do anything for face ID. It houses that key. I'm gonna gently remove this guy. And we're gonna we're gonna see if we still have that short. Now I kind of want there to still be a short um, after I remove it because that means that the component itself wasn't necessarily the the uh, the cause. Because the last thing I need is for the short to be inside of the layers of of the uh, the proximity sensor. All right, let's test real quick and see if the short is still there. All right, yep, we still have a short. Well, the amount of solder that's left on those pads is pretty dang even. And here on my, um, on our original one, I've got one pad. Seems like it has a little bit more than the rest. So I'm gonna try to even that out. I don't think I'm gonna need to reball. And it's like how flat that is really. I mean, it's not a huge difference. Or do I wick them? I don't know. What do you guys think? So looking at it, this one, yeah, I'm gonna just quickly touch that up. There we go. Yeah, we should be good to just flow this back onto the other one nicely. And I'm gonna clean both up really good to add some new flux. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and put on some flux. We're gonna line this guy up and slide him over. Look at that from the side and we can see that it's basically flush everywhere. The only place it's not is in that one corner where there's a teeny bit of solder more. So I think that that's why it's like that here. But yeah, that's seems to be on there nice and solid. Let's quickly test it. See if we got any additional groundings. All right, here we go. And should have 
ground there. No ground on four. And no ground anywhere else. We should be good to go then. So this uh, second down on the right and the bottom left are connected to the same line. And what was probably happening, if I touch here and go to ground. Yep, yeah, okay. So something between these bottom two, between these bottom two is touching. Yep, yeah, okay. Because the only one that's ground is this bottom one. So this this bottom one's ground, and this one was on the, the fourth pin. So these two are bridged somehow. And if we go over here, no connection there. But I do see a little bit of corrosion with all that dirt. It just came off of there, yeah. So right here, yeah, these are the two pads. So. This corrosion or dirt or whatever this is. Yeah, we got all that stuff coming off of there. I had made the two points contact to allow this uh, ambient light sensor to cause the short. After that's off, it's, it's no longer here. The culprit in this case, although I melted it, the ambient light sensor. Looking at CXW, we can zoom in and if we look here we got one two three four this is supposed to be an open line because we had the ground here it's like these ones are ground but this one was supposed to be an open line one two three four and uh it wasn't and when you have an open line it touches ground nothing nothing good comes of it so that's why it was causing a boot loop because it was attached to this uh to this open line all right here we got our premium uh, replacement proximity sensor assembly with our recently soldered on proximity sensor. Go ahead and connect it and see if we can get this phone to boot up. That's the first goal. Obviously getting this phone to work in the first place is the ultimate goal, but retaining that face ID would be nice. All right, we got the Prox connected up, battery connected. Boot loop or no boot loop, here we go. Here we've got the Apple logo hasn't boot looped yet so we're good so far fingers crossed we don't have that notification when it comes on ah still unable to activate face id or do we come i don't know uh pulled the the prox off again just like we did before well get the heat plate the same way we'll put it back on uh wicked it reballed it um to get equal to get even solder joints and then put it back together the exact same way let's see if it works now first time testing it we'll plug in battery and we'll turn it on all right apple logo that's good no boot loops so far that's even better and did we get that message when it pops up Uh, no SIM tray, no SIM card, no SIM card, but hey, look. Yeah. No uh, face ID message. Uh, don't have the passcode, but uh, I'll get that, test it. But yeah, that's that's a pesky repair. Requires a little bit of soldering. But, uh, but now that we've done that, we can get this back together, back to uh, the owner, and uh, they'll be good to go. All right, the owner of this device is gonna be extremely happy to know that uh, it's working again. And on top of that, their face ID is back. This was a fun repair. Sometimes you just gotta follow your gut. If you feel like you didn't do something as well as you could have and you're not getting the results, try it again. It might just work. Subscribe so that you don't miss future videos like this one. Thanks a ton for watching and we'll see you in the next video.